Okay, so let's talk about dark frames. There are four main types of frames that you're going to want to take when you're doing astrophotography. You've got light, dark, bias, and flat frames. And they all have a really specific purpose. And so we're just going to focus on dark, but we'll quickly just do a recap of light as well. So light frames are any frame that, or image that you're taking from a camera where you capture the object you want to photograph. So um, whether that's a galaxy or a selfie from your iPhone camera, um, if you're capturing photons of an object that you want to capture, that's a light frame. If you're wanting to take your astrophotography to a deeper level, the easiest way to do that is to add dark frames in. So what is a dark frame? Without getting too complex, dark frames work to remove noise from images. And there's two types of noise that dark frames work to remove. There's dark current and fixed pattern noise. Dark current is small electrical current leakage within the device or within the sensor that builds up a false signal. So the camera thinks it's received photons when it hasn't. And fixed pattern noise is sometimes also called amp glow. This is where um, you have a specific pattern of noise that is produced on the camera sensor over time. And the longer your exposures are, the more that pattern builds up and is obvious to see. And I'll put a example of this up on the screen for you to see. Um, in some modern cameras, there is no amp glow. They are amp glow free, but in a lot of CMOS and old CCD cameras, uh, there are specific amp glow patterns that you will need to take dark frames for to negate that out of your images. They can also help you remove hot or stuck pixels. So if you have a pixel that is consistently brighter than other pixels around it, then a dark frame will neutralize that pixel's brightness and bring it back to the brightness that it should be showing. So how do you take dark frames? Dark frames are quite simple to take, but you need to follow a couple of specific rules. Firstly, the dark frame needs to be the same exposure length as your light frame. If you're taking 30 second images, you need to take 30 second dark frame. Secondly, the temperature of the sensor needs to be as similar as possible to the temperature the sensor was when it took the light frames. As the sensors get warmer and cooler, there's different amounts of dark current that appears in the images, so you really want to be matching that temperature as best as you can. And the final thing is, a dark frame is dark, so you need to make sure that, the, that your sensor is covered, whether that's putting a physical cover uh, over just the camera sensor, or just putting, say, a lens cap on your telescope or your lens. Um, you just need to make sure that there really isn't any light getting into that sensor, so you need to make sure that you have a good fit of your lens cap or a hood of some sort. Um, make sure there's no light leakage at all because that will not be a true dark frame. So because your exposure length and your temperature need to be the same as when you were taking your light frames, this really means that most people will be taking their dark frames out in the field, especially if you have a DSLR you are almost required to take your dark frames out in the field. Um, if you're shooting at night and it's quite cool, um, and you say you're taking a minute, one minute exposures, then you need to be out there taking one minute exposures of dark frames just before or just after you finish your light frames. And that can be a bit frustrating because you want to be shooting the objects in the sky and you're losing time taking dark frames. Uh, and this is where having a dedicated astronomy cooled camera really helps because you can now take your dark frames when you're back at home rather than out in the field. So how many dark frames do you need to take or should you be taking? Um, I would say you want to take at least five. If you are using a DSLR and you don't want to lose a lot of time out in the field taking your dark frames, just take five dark frames and that will help greatly reduce the amount of fixed frame and dark current noise in your images. If you have a bit of extra time when you're out, say some clouds come over um, while you're shooting, uh, try and take about 20. 20 is a good number of dark frames to have and it really allows the algorithms when you're back home 
reduce that fixed and dark current noise a lot better. Um, and if you have a cooled camera and you're able to set up a dark library, then really you probably want to be adding maybe 40 or 50. After about 40 to 50, you will see very small gains. Of course, if you have a really powerful computer and you have lots of time on your hands, then you can take as many as you want. It will continue to improve the amount of noise that gets taken out, but there's really high diminishing returns after about 40 or 50 dark frames. So are dark frames worth it? That's really the main question. Is it worth taking dark frames, especially if you're taking dark frames out in the field when you could instead be taking images of the object that you're shooting? Well, let's jump onto the computer and do a side-by-side -side of an image with dark frames, without dark frames, and without dark frames, and a little extra exposure time. So here we have a dark frame from my dedicated astronomy camera, ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. This is a cooled astronomy camera. And this dark frame was taken at 45 seconds exposure length, negative 10 degrees Celsius on the sensor, and a gain of 120. And as you'd expect from a frame that is taken with the lens cap on, it is black, just as it should be. But if we go and stretch this image, which means we pull the exposure up as much as we can so we can see the detail that's really in those shadows and really exaggerate the differences between the lighter and the darker pixels, then we'll actually see some weird patterns going on. The most obvious of which is up in the top right corner, but we also have a little bit of pattern in the top left corner, and you may be able to see some vertical and horizontal banding as well as some hot and cold pixels going on. Now all of this is what I was talking about before with the dark current and the fixed pattern noise. This obvious fixed pattern noise or amp glow in the top right corner is caused by some electronics that may be just off to the side of the sensor that are perhaps generating a little bit of heat and heating up these pixels more than the pixels around it or is perhaps letting off a little bit of electrical current that is leaking out and think, making these pixels think that they have actually received photons when they haven't. So now let's have a look at these two images. One of these images has had dark frames subtracted from it and the other one hasn't. Now the most obvious spot, now the most obvious spot where this is visible is in that top right corner where on this frame, which does not have the dark frames, we can actually see a bit of that pink glow coming in. Whereas in this image, we can see it is completely removed and we have this really nice flat image. And if we zoom in to full size resolution, again, we can see this pink actually extends a fair way out and does cause a lot of extra noise and signal coming in, which has been really nicely removed on the left one where we have taken dark frames and subtracted that data back out. We can also see that in some of these really faint little stars, there's actually a little bit of fringing that has also been removed, which is quite nice. But that's not all that the dark frames do. If we move over to the center of the image here, I hope you can see this on YouTube, but there's a lot more noise in this right image than there is in this left image and that's the dark current that's get, that gets removed. This right image, the noise seems more pixelated and also more purple actually, which is very interesting. Whereas this right one, the grain feels smaller of that noise in comparison, which is quite nice. So yes, there is a difference when you add dark frames in to your workflow. But as we said before, how does this compare to just taking a little bit more exposure? So these frames were taken at 45 seconds. And on the left here, I used 10 of those to produce my dark frames to subtract out. So that's 450 seconds of exposure time that I lost. This new image on the left here, again, doesn't have any dark frames and has 450 seconds of extra exposure time added in. And I have looked long and hard at these two images and I cannot tell a single difference between the two of them. 
Now that will change if you are taking really long exposures and really long dark frames. I'm losing about seven or eight minutes of exposure time by taking 10 45 second dark frames. But if you were taking five minute exposures and you wanted to take 10 of those, then you're losing almost an hour of exposure time. And you could definitely make the argument that adding an extra hour of exposure time and then having to deal with this dark frame issue in post, whether it's through noise reduction or adding a little gradient or even doing a manual heal in Photoshop, you know, adding an hour of extra exposure time is a lot and will actually get you a lot more detail. So I would maybe say, yeah, get the extra exposure time there. But if you're taking lots of shorter exposures, adding five to 20 dark frames into your workflow is definitely worth it to reduce that background noise and clear up any of the amp glow. And I do have to, you know, be honest here and say that this is a low noise camera at negative 10 degrees Celsius. A DSLR's amp glow or noise may be a lot higher than this. So I'm going to toggle between these two dark frames now at the end to help you see those differences and decide whether dark frames are worth it for you. But I definitely think that I will be continuing to add dark frames into my workflow. And especially if you have a cooled camera, then you don't actually have to take dark frames out during the night. You can take them on a cloudy day and create a bank, your most used exposure times with the correct gain and sensor temperature. And then they're just ready for you to use whenever you come back from your imaging session. Thanks for watching. My name's Rowan and I'll see you next time.